first of all, thank you, Samir. So on behalf of uh, um, CRS Nano Focus Group, uh, we'd like to ask you a few questions, uh, if I may start. Sure. How do we increase the clinical translatability of um, nanomedicine? You know, in my mind, it really comes down to something unique that the nanoparticles can do, right? So for a long time, we have been using nanoparticles as a way of convenience. But for it to get it to get translated and make a strong impact, they have to do something unique. If you look historically at different classes of therapeutics, whether it's antibodies, whether it's viral vectors, whether it's RNA, whenever they do something special, they get translated because everybody is motivated to make it happen. And I think nanoparticles are going to have to do the same. Uh, whether it is targeting, whether it's encapsulation, whether it's delivery by different routes, they're going to have to do something special. And when that happens, they will get translated. Okay, excellent. Yeah, that's a, that's a, no, that's a really good point. Um, uh, another uh, question um, on continuation of that is that there has been a surge on development of biologics um, as opposed to traditional small molecule drugs um, uh, as, as a you know, more targeted and more uh, specialized therapeutics. Um, how do you think we can tackle the rush of biologics with uh, innovative drug delivery? You know, if you look at the, the surge of biologics, it's completely changing how people think about therapeutics, right? 25, 30 years ago, most therapeutics were small molecules. And people used to think about certain ways to make them into useful products, mostly by oral pills. And then came antibodies and other biologics, and they are all injected. Uh, some uh, subcutaneously, some intravenously. Most antibodies are delivered intravenously. And that is the biggest challenge, I think, in the field of biologics. So you can think about developing new ways to deliver them in a more effective way. If something is delivered intravenously, how can we deliver them subcutaneously? If something delivers subcutaneously, how can we deliver them orally? Yes. So I think that's where new delivery technologies can be really effective. And that can include delivering uh, biologics transdermally or orally. And orally in particular, I think is interesting in the context of nanotechnology because lots of interesting nano-based uh, strategies are being explored to enhance the oral bioavailability of biologics. And I think uh, they will continue to make progress and it will be great to see them getting translated uh, clinically and commercially. Um, lastly, I want to ask you, um, which is the research product that currently you are most excited about in your laboratory, or optimistic about in your laboratory? It's for a cause trouble for me, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to pick one project, uh, but you know, I mean, one um, I can mention in particular, especially given that it was just published earlier this week, uh, which is the idea of hitchhiking uh, of nanoparticles on red blood cells. And the idea really came about, you know, uh, by asking the question that I just mentioned uh, earlier, that how can we make nanoparticles do something unique? And when you think about the unique features of nanoparticles, we think about targeting, because that's what they uh, originally were they thought of. And, uh, you know, most nanoparticles, when you inject, they go to the liver and spleen, and very few remain in circulation for long enough time to target the tissue. So we started wondering as to whether we can think about new ways of overcoming that hurdle so that nanoparticles can stay in circulation for a long time and they can target different tissues. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, fundamentally, uh, if you think about what a nanoparticle has to do, it has to circulate, it has to target, that's a lot for a poor nanoparticle to do. Can we get some help from somewhere? And that's when we started thinking about using blood cells as a carrier. So a red blood cell stays in circulation for four months. It's not clear. So can we hitch a ride on red blood cell so that the circulation is taken care of and the nanoparticle can focus on targeting and tissue accumulation? So that's, uh, with that question, we, we develop nanoparticles which can attach to red blood cell. They circulate. And in the recent paper, we showed that we can get them into the lungs in substantial quantities. And currently, we are exploring them for the treatment of lung metastasis. Uh, taking advantage of the fact that these red blood cell hijacking nanoparticles do accumulate in substantial quantities in the lungs. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it has been a, a pleasure of ours uh, to host you at the School of Pharmacy, University of Queensland, and thank you for interacting with our students and researchers uh, in during these two days. And thank you for being part of this interview. Pleasure thank you so much. Mind. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much.